Hey guys, uh, Richard Schreiber here. In today's session, I'm going to be uh, going over a really exciting new instrument called Density, released by Mammoth Audio. Let's dive in. Here we are. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk you through the instruments, uh, and then I'm going to show it to you in action. Um, now, those of you who know me know that, obviously, I know the guys at Mammoth Audio. Um, I've been working for a long time, so when they said they were going to be releasing uh, an instrument specifically designed for trailer composers, I was very excited, especially when they mentioned oh, this guy, the cello. Um, so yeah, very excited to have this and to already have used it in my trailer music, which is always huge. Um, so let's talk about what we can see. Um, obviously, I have to say the, the interface is uh, very, very nice. Um, so what we have, it's two channels. We have channel one over here and channel two over here, which you can obviously toggle on and off, which, you know, I always think it's a nice, nice thing to be able to do, you know, especially if you're, because I like to just rather than have loads of different instances of, uh, uh, sorry, have rather than having one instance with both samples loaded, I often like to have just one sample and just load up loads of instances, which I know is memory inefficient, but yeah, this is the way I, I choose to work. Okay, so let's go through. So we, we can toggle the channel on and off, and obviously it's got a volume switch, a uh, volume slider for each channel. Um, here's a nice little thing where you can just browse the individual things within that instance. So if I click down here to the menu, we're actually in playable instruments. Instruments. <laughs> Playable instruments is. Uh, so that's that's what I'm doing. I'm just browsing through the playable instruments. And if I ch just go through to one shots, then oh, hello. if I just go through to one shots and just choose booms, um, for instance, I can then browse through those one shots, which is actually a really, uh, really hand handy thing, especially if you know where what you're dealing with. Okay, so let's just stick with booms for now. Um, I could t toggle it back on. So we've got a nice little waveform. Uh, preview and obviously we've got a little uh, playhead there telling you exactly where you are within the sample. Uh, now I can pan that left, pan that right and center and then obviously we can drop it down which I love doing. It becomes like an 80s tom when you do that. So I'm not going to go through through all the sounds right now, but I just want to talk about what we've got. And then what, this 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 button, I was I, I emailed them to them that I was very pleased to see this reverse button. You immediately have your pre hits, which I just think is fantastic, especially if you're loading up. So I'm getting, I'm getting distracted. Uh, so let's switch reverse back off. We've got our sounds. Obviously we have an ADSR, we have our envelope control here, so we can slow the attack, you know. Decay, sustain, release, etc. Yeah, I actually like to have quite a long release because I usually like to have the sample playing through. Um, now down at the bottom here we have a channel the instrument effects for channel one and we can switch between master and channel two which is yeah great which you know it's one of my favorite things about um the uh, spectrosonic stuff is having the the channel effects chains and then the master effects chains uh yeah a lot of them do but uh, a necessity also i like that the effect when you you don't see this for long enough the effect when you click flick the switch very nice now we have these two massive balls here um which look like those awesome uh, 80s electrode things, uh, you know, when you put your hands on them and they start uh, sparkling. So let's have a look. So we've got a distort and a mangle. Yes, I'm all in. Also, this seems like a sort of sample rate thing here, mangling. Uh, also, I like the fact that the light gets brighter the further up it goes. That's a visually, that's a great touch and you've got these great big numbers you know numbers are often too small i'm gonna remember that 96 that's awesome really nice um so let's dive into the effects that we have so obviously i've got this other channel which has the same features but i want to dive into the effects of channel one so what we've got here we have uh 
distortion screamer, uh, van 51 cabinet, reverb delay, compressor, tape saturation, saturation, transit master, hot solar cabinet, AC box cabinet, screamer, and lo-fi. Now, I've already gone through these. Uh, I'm pretty sure when they recorded their reverb, they have created all these bizarre um, convolution reverbs because one of the things that you tend to get is obviously we when you when you load up a reverb it's gonna it's like church drum room gated reverb it's, it's all these sort of ones that you normally get so they wanted to load up all of these lovely instances that they had which actually I think is a really nice touch and one that uh, we should be thinking about more is actually using our own convolutions and these guys have created these lovely convolutions um, which is the one I, I think Archway is the one I like actually train station stairs yeah yeah they're, to be, they're all really nice um, and especially w when we're playing these hits they're really nice because they give the hit an otherworldly quality which as trailer composers we are constantly looking for how we can make our sounds that we all have sound otherworldly or different uh, yeah great <laughs> love it uh, so let's load up another instrument uh, now screamer <laughs> yeah it definitely does that uh, van 51 cabinet so these are uh, basically a vast array of disgusting distortions which you can turn you can toggle on and off um, and then you can ind individually affect the the uh, you know you've got if it scoop the mids like on the old classic guitar playing bedroom guitar playing that is uh, don't scoop the mids live it doesn't sound great um, yeah uh, yeah you know, it's just the, the ability to manipulate these effects and they're also they're really dirty which is Great, I really like that. Uh, so we've done these guys. Let's have a look at delay time. So it's the nice thing is it's tempo mapped rather than in milliseconds, which you know. Although I like the idea of the 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 ones that aren't tempo mapped because I'm like, yeah, that'd be cool and arty if they were slightly out of time. I don't because then it starts muddying the mix. Uh, keep it tempo mapped, please. Thank you very much. Obviously, dry. Uh, let's make it. <laughs> make it wet that's uh yeah uh late late play it's uh, fb compressor now this is very very nice you can't quite hear it so brilliantly on these on these hits really nice i want to say subtle compressor but it's not a subtle compressor it's oh yeah it's great just yeah Fab. Really nice compressor there, which actually uh, was, I've used, I was, I've used this before, but I, I kind of loaded this on into every instance, the FP compressor, really nice. Tape saturation, you know, usual stuff. Saturation. Again, I like that one. Simple. You know, it's like, I, I see why Waves released those series of one knobs, because, you know, actually it's quite nice just to be like, 100% done. You know, rather than being like, mm, let's mix all of these things. Yes, that is fat. Obviously, we've got the, the transient master, which is a bit of an essential. Uh, love the transient master. Uh, hot solar cabinet. Again, more filth. Absolute filth. AC box cabinet. Again, more filth. I've learned... Ooh, a different screamer. And lo-fi. Which has a similar sound to... It's mangling, kind of like a sample rate type of thing. Um, so there we go. These are these are the effects that we have. Uh, and you can load those on Channel 1, Master, and Channel 2. Now let's dive into the sounds that are loaded with this instrument. Um, we have uh, one shot and playable. Um, I was actually lucky enough to take part a little bit in the construction of this. Uh, we use this throat singer. Where are you? Um, hello? 
we use <laughs> we use this throat singer um, in throat four. Uh, you know, uh, to create all sorts of these impacts <laughs> for our, um, oh, there we go, Rich Risers. I think this might be me. Hey, I made the final cut. Who knew? I didn't know. So there's me, actually, uh, sounding like a zombie. Uh, so yeah, we've got all sorts of these uh, fantastic uh, <laughs> sounds. I, when the guy was doing this in the recording session, I was it was like uh, Sepultura. It was awesome. Loved it. Uh, and he did some rises too. Which I used in Throat 4. Uh, uh, which, is, which got a placement recently, uh, The Outsider. And you can hear this stuff, this uh, on The Outsider trailer. You know, these kind of, these filthy hits. Uh, and then these pads, which are beautiful. Other world, really otherworldly stuff. Because then we let's let's have a little bit of fun with this, shall we? More reverb. FB compressor. Let's change that reverb. Master, let's smush this. Too much. Yeah, lovely stuff. I mean, it's just really nice to have a different sounding vocal pad uh different sunny vocal altogether really so you've got what we've we got here let's go through these we've got brahms <laughs> which are really nice you know if you i'm, I'm gonna get i'm gonna get to get, get the problem is i have problem with this with walkthroughs and these reviews i get so distracted by playing through the sounds i go oh that's awesome let's smash it to bits <laughs> Okay, hundred percent. Let's take the makeup down. Let's smush it some more saturation. No, not transient master. I won't. <laughs> yeah, lovely. That's a bit bit too brutal for my for my taste, but um, really lovely sounds to play with these 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 Brahms. And obviously, one thing I forgot to mention is um, this down the bottom here, which is being able to then drop the samples according to the key or the note you want to play, um, which is awesome. Uh, then we have mantras. So again, this is. Which again we used in throat. Which are uh, yeah, really dark and weird. And drums. <laughs> Who doesn't love a bit of that? Uh, impacts. Boom. Uh, pads were done. Throw pads fast. So the, what it means by what they mean by the pads fast is when it's just the pads. 
the vowels are changing slowly, whereas this one is more like yo yo yo. See, yo 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 yo, and then hit scrawl. So here we go. We've got a bit of an offset for the sample, which we can use here. Uh, hits growl, hits talking. So they're kind of like swish hits, these are, these hits talking one and two. Yep, and then we've got hits whisper. Which I think is rather than a whisper, it's more of a... Still talking. Um... Then we have Rises, which he does. And I'm famous, guys. Rich Rises. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> per percussion loops, which I love. Uh, yeah, uh, so that's just the throat singer. And then we have the cello. I'm going to save the cello because the cello, for me, the cello um, is what makes this instrument amazing. Um, the tuba is pretty cool too. Um, the thing with the tuba is I think it's not so immediate. So you'll see what I mean. Uh, so if we just go into, for instance, um, longs. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so you see, for me, it requires some playing with. I mean, actually, the, the single notes. That's actually pretty cool. Nice and farty, which everyone wants from a uh, tuba. So we've got all of these things. And the thing is, they say cheap, but there's also trombone going on here too. Um, so let's go through. Staccato. 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 Euphonium. I guess that's what that means. Staccato with a mute. Crescendos. Decrescendos. Which actually would be really useful as... I mean, that's a bram. A really nice bram. Flutter tongue. Which is really nice for effects. Let's go, let's go up to an F, shall we? Yeah, I mean, these would be just lovely. I mean, immediately, let's, we're just going to go, hmm, effects, hey? Um, how about we put some reverb on this? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, I should turn that off because otherwise it's going to be on everything. Uh, just this is the thing I love about sample libraries, especially sample libraries that thought through, is that, and especially sample libraries that have gone, okay, let's not just do what everyone else is doing. Um, obviously, with there are tons of uh, solo instrument, like playable instruments. Uh, but the, th the thing that I like what they've done here is with the throat singing, the tuba and the cello is they've gone, okay, well, trailer composers uh, generally don't want a beautiful, pristine instrument. We want something to play with that has character and sounds organic and feels interesting. And they have done that. <laughs> I mean, well, some of the sounds need a bit more love. Yeah, these are basically all Brahms, Brahms, really, aren't they? Yeah, or you load this into, uh, oh, done that. Load it, load it through loads of effects, and you've got these wonderful sounds. Sforzando as well. Um, Sousaphone. I did not know they had a sousaphone. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> yes. And the wonderful thing about this is sometimes when you get these low instruments, uh, they're not recorded this close. I mean, this is close and in a small room, so it sounds like, hey, that guy's there. Or that girl, whoever's playing it. And say, Torchuba. Oh, I like that. That's good. It's tongue stops. You've got a pulse there. Let's uh, let's shove this through the compressor because it's really nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice little a nice little pulse going on there. Um, just if we just gate it a little bit and etc etc etc. Uh but done. Trombone bend fast. Hello, where are you? Burp, burp, burp. Again, they're thinking bombs here. Um which Oh, crescendo. Bombs and transitions, to me this is all I'm hearing really. The the short notes would would need a lot of uh, a lot of playing with to be really uh, effective, I think, because the the problem with brass. Oh, that was nice actually. The problem with brass when it's short notes, they 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 sound very keyboardy, um, which isn't a bad thing. Now we're talking. Yeah, more bombs. Oh, that is nice. Again. Almost like a didgeridoo. Really interesting takes on the instruments that we already play and we already use. Um, so for me, the throat singer and the tuba are real sort of sound design textural elements that you would use for the Brahms, for the impacts, for the risers, for the transitions. Um, I wouldn't use them for the for the staccato uh, as a staccato element. But I, and what I mean by that is I wouldn't be like orchestrating this as a mock-up to use this as a tuba to play staccato tuba. I would use this as the starting point to create my own sounds. And this is what they are thinking. That's why they've given us these wonderful effects through here as well. Um, so that's, that's the tuba, which is actually a tube, all sorts of lovely brass. Uh, now let's get to the business, shall we? Now, those of you who know me and know my writing know how much I use a cello uh, and know the type of cello sounds I, I like, which is hot mic'd, uh, interesting articulations. So, for instance, if I just had a little play. You can immediately hear, hello, this sounds like this type of cello. I use all the time. Spiccato. Pizzicato. Again, hot mic in a small room. Lovely. I mean, this is the stuff I do on every throat album. Uh, it's just... It's so playable. Yeah, lovely. Benz. Wouldn't use that myself. Cash drum. Um... Now, once uh, in throw three, we recorded three cellos and a double bass, and we got them to play with different instruments. And this is a take on that. They are using them. To, <laughs> they are playing the cello with cash, which is really nice because it's got the element of uh, percussion, which is great. You know, uh, and I use this stuff a lot in my tracks, which is uh, high percussion, sticks, clicks, and things to give an element of pace. So you've got your. So this is giving an element of tone. You can hear the round robins there. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which is great. It's the four. And you can also hear the different layers of velocities recorded here. Um, so you've got this element of percussion, which I really like. Oh, 
I mean, that's that's a track idea just there. And because the sound is new and interesting to my ears, although I do this a lot, it's still new and interesting to my ears, I feel inspired, which is exactly what I want. Obviously, these are Colenio stuff. Um, for horror, I would have liked it if they would given us a playable Colenio, because Colenio is such a lovely sound. And again, this is great, this one, playing the cello with a credit card. Uh, ah, sorry, I got my cable in the way there. Let's go over here. Switching keys. It's really nice. It's it reminds me a little bit of the the Spitfire. Um, was it London? The little, some what are their more experimental string libraries where they use different articulations, and they sound great. Uh, really inspiring. Long harmonics. Lovely stuff. Uh, again, I really like the fact it's all close. This is interesting, short harmonics. Very guitar-like, really nice. Harmonic slides. Again, horror stuff all over it. Risers. Need I say more, guys? The sounds you're getting from this cello alone, I think, you know, for me, obviously, because I write cello stuff all the time, this makes the price completely worth it, this instrument itself. And then the sound, the sound, the sound design capabilities of the tuba and the throat singer for textural brahms and things like that. Just so exciting. Okay, so let's uh, move on to these uh, one-shots, um, which you would more traditionally get with these kind of... Uh, uh, trailer music instruments now upper sort of a precursor here i'm not i'm not a massive fan of one shot libraries um as in uh as in, as like a playable thing i love them as drag and drop samples because that's ultimately what i end up doing with them usually is i would uh play a key bounce it in place, then I've got the audio file, then I can start playing around with it, and it becomes a much more usable one-shot. Uh, so what they've done is they've also, you've also got access to all of these one-shots within the instrument itself, uh, within the browser. Uh, so you've got your, your one-shots in here, uh, which is so useful for being able to just drag them in and out of the um, session. So here we go. We've got booms, brahms, clocks, downers, drones, hits, reverse effects, risers, stutters, transitions. I believe that's everything. Yes. Okay. So booms we've heard a little bit anyway. We've got sub booms. Again, really great sounds. These are perfect for act one, you know, kind of drop downs and things. all over the place, tonal subs. So they have more of a, a, a tonal element to them. Uh, Brahms, okay, there's a ton of Brahms here. Uh, yep, we've got aggressive, aggressive two, benders, benders two, hits, whoosh hit, dark, dark two, experimental, experimental two. So, I mean, there's a ton of sounds. There we go. That's my track idea done. <laughs> I mean, these sound great, don't they? Really lovely sounds. So if we go here, you can see us playing through the samples here. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're just fantastic. Just so useful. Um, because, you know, even even on quite subtle uh, trailer cues, it's good to have access to these type of sounds because they add a, a cinematic element and they add um, 
another sonic dimension. Even when you're working with close things like small clicks and fingers and snaps, if you get chuck one of those in the back, then all of a sudden your track has expanded its landscape. So this stuff is so useful. Um, more of those bending bars. Which I actually I think really nice uh, and I usually do that with a lot of my bombs anyway you just drop the uh, put a little bit um, uh, pitch bend just at the end of the note hits I mean they are violent they are tremendously violent hits so they've got like they're, they're not just hits really are they if you listen to them they are bombs and hits so that's obviously why they're in the Brahms folder. Uh, Whoosh hits, which uh, I like to use a lot. And when I say, I, I, I usually advocate creating your own these because the faff of syncing them can come so, sometimes over um, complicate matters. And that's why I would, I would probably, if I was going to use this, I would drag and drop it into my, into my file. Uh, dark Brahms. really lovely i mean what it i mean it's it's almost like what i what i would like from a library like this moving forward hint hint guys is just give me a boam library right but don't give me a boam library where i have to use these uh pitch down things give me a playable two octave instrument with the brahms and i don't mean a single sample like stretched up and down i mean sampled up the keyboard So then I don't have to worry about programming two levels of MIDI. <laughs> That's lazy, I know, but you know. It's one of those things that takes my time. Um, I mean, yes. I mean, they're all great. They're all great, and I, can, I have already used some of these uh, clocks. Uh, now, I haven't used these in the way that was intended. Because these are actually loops. So what I actually did... I took the... Took the um, oh, what's the word called? Sustain... That one. I've forgotten it. The R of ADSR. My brain is not working. I took that down so that I could actually just... Just play this first sample of the clock. Uh, the same with the fast as well. Uh, because, yeah, that's why I, I didn't want to loop. I wanted, I wanted to create rhythms with it because they're they're not they're nice they're nice interesting clicks. Really nice. Okay, downers. You know this one. Oh. See, I'm with the downers. I'm more a fan of the subtle ones that, like that. It's almost like a huge spaceship flying over the top. These ones, these ones that they don't appeal to my style of writing, but I do hear people use these very effectively. Bring it to the bridge, you know that type of thing. Lovely, lovely stuff. Drones. Give me drones, guys. Again, the thing I talked about with Brahms, I would have liked that. So as these as playable sounds, because that... Listen to the lovely texture there. If I could have access to that spread across the keyboard, it would be... Just so nice because then it wouldn't just be a drone; it would be a playable instrument. Uh, and yes, I could do it down here, but I can't. I can't access like chords or melodies with this drone. Obviously, it's a drone. I know, so I'm not exactly going to be. But they're such lovely sounds. And interesting sounds. And the thing I like about it as well is they haven't done the thing which I find so frustrating it is in a lot of synths uh, and sample libraries is when they do 
tonal drones. It's like you play a single key and you're getting a minor or major chord. I'm like, well, I don't want that. Yeah, just lovely drones. I'm going to say lovely a lot because, I mean, these are fantastic. Tons of hits. We've got experimental. We've got horror. These are nice. The thing I love about horror hits is the kind of... You get this hit. And the tail is the thing that makes it feel awkward and weird. Okay, we're in some deep, dark cavern here. And then I bring in the cello. Admittedly, it's turned from a horror track, but you know. Lovely stuff, guys. Well done. You know this. Oh, let's uh, let's turn the release release. That was the word. Actually, quite a nice playable organic attack thing there. I like that. There's almost too many sounds for me to choose from. Trailer. I mean, this kind of, this library is essentially like the starter pack for those of you who want to get into trailer music and also are wanting to have slightly edgier and slightly more organic sounds. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that sounds, sounds great. Uh, reverse effects, which is the thing I find interesting because... They've given you the option to reverse all of the sounds anyway. So, here we go. Uh, and that's what it is. So we've got this hit and then the, the reverse tail right at the end. Uh, let's go into... Oh, uh, where are I? Reverse effect. Oh, I was in the wrong place. Oh, it's trailer hits. Let's go into reverse effects. My bad, guys. Sorry. So in theory, this reverse effect, I could reverse. Let's try that again. There it is. Okay. Um, all these lovely reverse effects. Let's hear some of them together. Again, when I use these, which I have already, I drag and drop the samples because they're all pretty cool. That's a really nice thing about playing chords with these type of things. Uh, you know, you're also not actually playing a chord because they're all essentially the same key if they are tonal. Um, but then you get the different and it becomes very uh, the different uh, reverse tail endings uh, reverse attacks I guess that's the word I'm looking for uh, and then it, it's very uh, odd and disconcerting uh, and tonal of course I like those. They are very nice. Uh, let's go to risers. Uh, Sci-fi, Sci-fi 2, trailer, trailer. Let's have some risers. Mm, that does sound sci-fi. These are great. Boom. Lovely stuff. Stutters. Again, I don't really use stutters. 
it's it doesn't it doesn't sort of uh, tie in with the way I write often. And again, I hear some people use it to tremendous effect. If you're doing synthetic sound design, then often stutters are so so good. And then uh, transitions. Ooh, let's have a listen to these hit transitions. Swish hits, basically. More swish hits. So often transitions are often overlooked, I think. Because they add so much to your track, so much atmosphere. And the wonderful thing is actually what you're getting with this library is you're not just getting these transitions. These rises are transitions, these reverse effects are transitions, these stutters are transitions, these downers are transitions. Pretty much all of these are transitions, which is very cool. Um, yeah, uh, so what I want to do now is, I mean, I've kind of shown you the, the library itself and the fact that you can then load up two lots and have on, let's just change this before I go. Let's go to some bombs and get some of these benders in there. So you can combine the two, and obviously that's actually a huge feature, but I'm not spending a lot of time on that because that's part of the fun of this that I think you should uh, have a go at, is uh, play with these sounds and then load them up. Uh, I don't often work in that way, but if I do, it's tremendously fun. Hit some whams. Who wouldn't love that? So here we go. What I've got is, uh, I'm a, I've, I worked on this track. Uh, uh, it's kind of like a organic sound design thing, uh, but I wanted to give density a try. Uh, so we're just going to play through this. It's not finished yet, um, but you get the idea. So what we've got is all these purple ones up here. These are all density things. So I've used the cello extensively. Uh, Boams, drones, reverse effects, risers, clocks, hits, and subs. And then I've used my own Schreiber swish hits, which is really difficult to say. Uh, and then my own string risers, my own violin risers, um, my own eerie whistling pad things. And then the only other thing that wasn't mine or density was um these uh los angeles modern percussion and a few of these omnisphere patches so let's have a listen and i'll talk you through what i've done
Okay, so there we go. Um, it's kind of a, a a classic me track, if I'm honest with you. Um, it's a very spacious act one, uh, followed by very minimal act two, and then act three. I'm not really doing a traditional act three. It's essentially act two, mark two, ramping up. And then when you think you're going to get an act three. No, you don't. Because most of my tracks are about building the tension and without letting the release happen. I guess that's why they get placed in a lot of thrillers. Um, so here we go. So let's have a listen to some of these sounds. So we've got the cellos going on. Uh, these are the cellos, the short cellos. I mean, they sound great and they sound real, which is a huge bonus. We've got these bombs going on. These are the actually. I mean, I just played these with a very short release, uh, which I actually think is a really nice play way to play these types of sounds. Uh, and obviously, just the drones was pretty straightforward. Reverse effects and risers, which, you know. Just do the business. And clocks, like I said, I just played them in. Uh, I didn't use the loop setting. Hits for trailers. Subs. They were quite subtle hits. Um, and then obviously the other stuff is... Uh, yeah, my own violin risers. And my own sort of whistling pad. And then we've got the percussion. So it's really a showcase for density. I mean, the entire track is essentially utilising the sounds that I liked, which was, as you can tell, mostly the cello. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to go back to that because the cello is just fantastic and fun to play and superb for thriller, for horror, and also for layering on top of other sounds. Uh, now, I'm pretty sure Mammoth do a pretty hefty discount for their members so head on over there and uh sign up uh, and that you'll get a discount when you when you buy this thing uh it's really cool it's really fun um like i said the cello for me is is the money and the playable stuff is the, is the cool stuff for those of you like one shots the you know i have other instruments like this and the one shots on this are lovely they're they're slightly more organic sounding than a lot of them which i like uh, and i've used those as drag and drop not in this instance um, but in a couple of my, other my tracks that i've used it for now i hope you enjoy this i hope this has kind of like at least shown you the some of the capabilities of the instrument obviously it's kind of very much within my own sound world which is that kind of like tense building cello stuff doy um so i hope this has sort of clarified some things uh, any questions or anything head over head over to mammoth audio and fire them over there um but yeah, I'm, I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks to, for taking the time to watch this. I very much appreciate it. See you around, Jabs. <laughs>